The movie begins with a few teenagers sitting around a table at a house party. The hot topic is how to burn calories and stay fit. One of them brings out her phone and shows an app, saying it's extremely effective. This makes everyone curious, but when a girl tries to find it, she comes across a different app with a similar title, Countdown. On reading the description of the app, she finds that it can foretell the exact time of a person's death down to the last second. Intrigued, the group decides to turn the app into a drinking game, but one girl named Courtney is reluctant. However, when everyone insists, she hesitantly downloads the app and accepts the terms and conditions. Afterwards, everyone in the group gets roughly 20 to 70 years, except Courtney, who has only three hours to live. But none of them take it seriously and make her drink all the beer as per the game's rules. Heh, <laughs> you're not gonna die, Courtney. Now hurry up and poison yourself. Just then, her boyfriend Evan shows up and helps her with the drinks. He gets so wasted that he is barely able to drive, but he's going to anyway. So, after the party is over, Courtney ditches him and decides to walk home alone. Along the way, she gets a cryptic message from the app, saying she has broken the user agreement. She then notices a figure following her from behind, prompting her to walk faster. Suddenly, the app gives out a notification, mentioning that she has no more than two minutes to live. Terrified, Courtney switches off the phone and runs into her house. She heads straight to the bathroom to calm herself down, but things get even weirder. She hears a curtain move, and when she turns around, an unseen force takes a hold of her and hurls her up towards the ceiling. The mobile phone is also miraculously turned on, and when the countdown reaches zero, Courtney is thrown to the bathroom floor in a lifeless state. Elsewhere, we see that Evan's car has met with a horrible accident. He didn't download the app, he's just an idiot. The seat in which Courtney was supposed to be in is impaled by a tree log. The scene then cuts to a hospital where a nurse named Quinn is delivering food to the patients. When she learns that one of them is missing, she searches around the hospital until she finds the patient in the balcony area. He is revealed to be none other than Evan. Quinn sits with him and tries to relax him for his surgery the next day. However, Evan is still traumatized by what happened with his girlfriend. He explains to Quinn what the countdown app is, which says that he has only 19 hours left to live. He also tells her about his girlfriend, Courtney, and how she died. Evan believes that he will also die in the given time, which happens to coincide with his surgery. However, Quinn, who does not believe in all this, convinces him that everything will be fine. On the way back, she bumps into a senior nurse, Amy, who asks Quinn to come with her. The hospital staff then surprise her with a cake, as it turns out that Quinn is now a registered nurse. Later, she gets a notification on her phone, which turns out to be an ad for the Countdown app. Without thinking twice, she downloads the app and agrees to the terms and conditions. It mentions that she only has two days to live, but Quinn shrugs it off thinking the app is a joke. As she enters the lift, a senior Dr. Sullivan tries to flirt with her. However, Quinn rudely rejects him before leaving. Hell yeah, Quinn. The same night, Quinn has trouble completing her nursing documents, so she calls her friend for help. The latter says that she needs a birth certificate to fill out the form. The scene then cuts to Quinn going to her parents' house to retrieve her birth certificate. After a bit of searching, she finds it in her late mother's room. Just then, Quinn hears a sudden noise from the closet, and when she goes to inspect, she finds her little sister, Jordan, hiding with her boyfriend. The guy immediately leaves, while Quinn is left in disbelief about what she just saw. However, Jordan is enraged that her romantic moment was spoiled. She never wanted Jordan to come out of the closet. She shouts at her sister for always being away, even after the death of their mother. Once she leaves, Quinn is greeted by her father. He inquires if she wants to come and visit their mother's grave sometime, to which she agrees. The following day, Evan is being prepared for his surgery, but he is reluctant as the app says that he only has three minutes left. So, he ditches his surgery and leaves the room, but right then the app sends out a notification saying he has broken the user agreement. The next second, Evan sees a tall black figure behind him in the mirror, but doesn't find anyone there in real time. The deathly figure then follows him to a dark staircase. Evan uses the flashlight on his phone and nervously navigates the place. When he looks up, he suddenly sees a figure in Courtney's clothes. It grabs him and chucks him down the staircase right as the countdown reaches zero. Shortly after, Quinn arrives at work, where Amy informs her about the incident, disturbing her. To get more information, she steals Evan's phone, but realizes that she needs a fingerprint to unlock it. Left with no option, Quinn heads to the hospital mortuary. There, she tries to use Evan's finger, but it doesn't work. Hence, she opens his eyes and finally unlocks the phone using face recognition. As Quinn goes through his phone, she notices the countdown, which has reached zero.
Later, she realizes that her countdown time is at the same hour she will meet her dad and Jordan to go to her mother's grave. So, she calls her dad and immediately cancels her plans. As expected, the app says that she has broken the user agreement and suddenly, Quinn sees a dark figure in the room. To her relief, it is only Dr. Sullivan, who has come to ask her help with a patient and probably to hit on her again. The same night, Quinn tries her best to delete the app, but to no avail. Hence, she surfs the internet for solutions. She comes across different cases about the countdown app which only aggravates her worries. As she prepares to sleep, she suddenly sees a dead Evan on her bed. Fed up, she throws her phone to the ground, shattering it completely. But despite this, it still shows the countdown. This terrifies Quinn deeply, so she heads out to her car and falls asleep there. In the morning, Jordan wakes her up, and the two of them go to Quinn's apartment. Jordan wants to spend some time with her sister, but when Quinn refuses, stating that it isn't safe, she gets angry and storms off. Later, Quinn goes to an electronic shop and buys a new phone. She becomes relieved to find that the app isn't there. However, when she is about to leave, she gets a notification from the countdown app on her new phone. Quinn frantically asks the shopkeeper to delete it, but he is unable to do so. Frustrated, she gets into her car, while a customer from the store named Matt asks the shopkeeper about the app Quinn was talking about. Meanwhile, as she is driving, Quinn suddenly sees a dark figure, causing her to ram her vehicle into another. The angry owner of the car is about to beat her up, but just then, Matt comes outside and saves her ass. He then reveals that he, too, is suffering because of the countdown app. To discuss it further, the two enter a bar and think of a way to read the terms and conditions of the app. App, they learn that it only pops up when the app is freshly installed. So Matt convinces a drunk guy to download Countdown. When he reaches the Terms and Conditions page, Quinn starts reading them. They state that the players have to accept their fates, no matter what. Despite the ominous warning, the drunk guy accepts. And to everyone's surprise, he has a long countdown of 39 years. Meanwhile, thinking that demons are involved, Quinn and Matt go to the hospital to talk to the priest. However, he tells them to visit someone much more qualified and gives them an address. As they are about to leave, Quinn is called by Amy, while Matt goes to the bathroom. There, he sees a barefoot child from beneath the stall, but doesn't pay much attention to it. Afterwards, as Matt washes his hands, he hears someone crying. When he goes to check, he sees the same kid walking through the stalls, as if there is nothing in between. Soon, the light goes out, and a mysterious figure attacks him from behind. Matt struggles for his life, but the next second, the lights come back on, and the demon is nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile, Quinn heads to a meeting with HR, along with Dr. Sullivan. It turns out the pervert doctor lied to HR, saying he is the subject of continuous assault by Quinn. The latter tries to assert that she is innocent, but the HR department suspends her for an indefinite amount of time. Enraged, Quinn storms out of the room and meets Matt, who is still shaken by the earlier incident. Shortly after, they arrive at a church and meet the man that the priest pointed them towards. After hearing them out, he recalls an ancient story where a similar demon had terrorized a village. However, after the people united and got to know of its weakness, they killed it forever. Until now, it's in an app now. Now, the priest wants to get a better idea of how the app works, so he tells Quinn and Matt to find someone who can hack the app. In the next scene, the two go to the same mobile shop and ask the shopkeeper for help. The latter thinks that it is a joke, but when they offer him a decent amount of money, he agrees. Later, the shopkeeper hacks into the app and uncovers the code, which is in Latin. He also finds the countdown clocks for all the users and changes the parameters, increasing their lifespans. Surprisingly, Jordan's name is also displayed there, revealing that she, too, has downloaded that app. Following the successful hacking operation, Quinn takes Matt home, as she is too scared to spend the night alone. They have a short conversation about their lives and soon fall asleep. At midnight, Quinn suddenly wakes up after hearing something outside the room. To her horror, Matt is the one outside, meaning the person in bed with her is the demon. She freaks out, and when Matt takes off the bed sheets, the demon disappears. Unfortunately, both Matt's and Quinn's countdown goes back to their original numbers. Elsewhere, Jordan hears her phone ring in another room and goes to get it. When she notices the countdown, suddenly, the lights start to flicker, and she hears her dead mom talking, and the very next second, the woman appears. Jordan almost has a heart attack and runs for her life, and luckily, Quinn and Matt arrive in the nick of time and rescue her. After this, the trio heads to the priest. There, he deduces from the app code that a curse has been put on them. Yeah, the code 
Code told me that. The priest then explains that in order to lift the curse, someone with the countdown app has to either die early or live longer than the countdown. As expected, they choose the second option, and the priest decides to help them out. He blesses some salt before making a holy circle to keep them safe from the demons. Sorry, this is actually pretty cool. After the procedure is complete, Matt finds out he has only two minutes left on the clock, so he steps aside for a second. Quinn accompanies him to console him, but they end up sharing an emotional kiss. All of a sudden, the lights go out, and all of them rush inside the circle. The demon appears shortly after, and as planned, it cannot enter the circle. They won this round of salt paper app demons. Suddenly, Matt's phone starts to blare, and he begins to see visions of his dead brother, who manipulates him out of the circle. The demon then immediately pulls him outside the building, and Quinn runs after him. But when the two reunite, Matt is abruptly run over by a car, and kills, devastated. Quinn returns to the house, only to find her sister bleeding from an apparent cut. So, she immediately rushes Jordan to the hospital. There, Quinn is approached by another nurse, who reveals that she too is a victim of Dr. Sullivan's abuse. She wishes that someone kills him in a gruesome manner. Hearing this, Quinn gets a brilliant idea. Since Sullivan also has the app, she plans to kill him prematurely, hoping that it will lift the curse. Later, Quinn manages to seduce him in his office, and tells him to follow her to the closed section of the hospital. Once Sullivan falls into her trap. She attempts to inject him with a ton of morphine. But right then, Jordan arrives there looking for her. Suddenly, the doctor is dragged away by the demon to stop the premature killing. Quinn goes after them, while Jordan checks her phone, which reveals that she only has two minutes left to live. Meanwhile, Quinn finds Sullivan and is about to attack him, but the demon pushes her away, allowing the doctor to escape. After a while, the demon starts chasing after Jordan. Just as her time is about to run out, Quinn confronts it with a syringe pushed against her skin. The demon impersonates her dead mother, but Quinn is not phased. She bravely injects herself with the morphine, killing her on the spot. Because she died before her countdown ended, the curse is lifted, and the demon is seemingly vanquished. Meanwhile, Jordan rushes to Quinn's dead body, and surprisingly finds a drug written on her arm with a bottle and syringe in her pocket. Without wasting any time, Jordan uses the syringe and injects it into Quinn's arm, bringing her back to life. The scene then cuts to some time in the future where Quinn, Jordan, and her dad pay respects to their mother's grave. The movie ends as Quinn gets a notification on her phone, which says that the latest version of the countdown app has been installed.